So after thinking for a couple minutes, uh, we're going to find the total area. The region I was worried about finding was, uh, that I was more concerned about finding was this region here because uh, we're gonna have a different, oh, I zoomed in too far, great. All right, we're gonna have this top function part of the way and a different top function here. And so we're already gonna have to split it into two integrals, less fun. Uh, if we get the total area, we have the same top function, same bottom function, and we can compute that area easily. And then when it comes to area one right here, we actually have the same top function, same bottom function the whole time. All right, so let's go ahead, let's do the easy area first. I like to build some confidence. So I'll call this just total area. So we're going to go in zero. Well, I'll just write the full formula, a little a, a little b. Uh, for us, it'll be top minus bottom. And we have a dx. So our top is our quadratic, which is negative 2x squared plus 6x minus the bottom. Oh, nice. It's zero. Fantastic. And we're going from zero to three. Okay, so anti-power rule, negative two x squared is gonna turn into an x cubed negative two thirds. Six x is gonna become three x squared. I'm doing guessing and checking here. Pretty good at guessing, but you do need to make sure that you check. Uh, and when I take derivative, I do get uh, back to the original there. And now we're gonna plug in three and plug in zero. Now we plug in zero, we get a zero for both here. Okay, so this fraction right here, this three turns this power into a two. And so we have negative two times three squared is nine and plus 27. Um, let's have even more fun with powers of three. So I could factor out a three squared and I got negative two plus three, which is one. So I just have three squared, which is nine. All right, so that's the area, the full area in yellow. Now we're gonna go for area one. Okay, so I mentioned we don't know C. How in the world are we supposed to figure out C? Well, you just intersect two functions, not so bad. So intersecting y equals mx and y equals negative 2x squared plus 6x. So we're setting the y's equal. So we have mx equals negative 2x squared plus 6x. All right. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, you already know one, x inter or one, uh, <laughs> one intercept from looking at the graph. Uh, but we're going to keep going here. So I like all my x squared terms to be positive, so I'm gonna add 2x squared to the left. I'll get that equal sign out of there. 2x squared plus mx minus 6x equals zero. 2x squared plus m minus 6x equals zero. All right, be very careful. m does not equal six here. Just because you have a factor of m minus six does not mean m equals zero. Uh, we need to set this equal to, or we, this is equal to zero. What can we do here? We can factor out something else, which is factoring out an x. So I'm gonna do something you can't do on your paper. Fancy, fancy. Oh no. Hopefully that, there we go. Oh, come on. All right, so factor out the x. So we have x times 2x plus 
m minus 6. I don't need to wrap in extra parentheses because I got the thing that we were multiplying by out of there equals 0. We, here, we can use the zero product property because we're multiplying uh, two terms, a times b equals 0, so a equals 0 or b equals 0. All right, so a equals 0 means x equals 0. Uh, and that was the one that you saw already on the graph, hopefully. Uh, the other one is 2x plus m minus 6 equals 0. And we want to solve. You have to remember what we're solving for. We're solving for x, not m. m is we still got some more work to get to m. 2x equals 6 minus m. So add the 6, subtract the m, divide by 2. 3 minus m over 2. All right, that is c. That's our c value right there. So c is 3 minus m over 2. Now you might be worried, oh my goodness, there's an m in there. But if you look at what's happening in the graph, if your slope changes, if this slope was much steeper, you would get a different intersection point. So it makes sense that the x value where the curve intersects the line is going to change depending on the slope of that line. And that's reflected right there. Okay, fun, fun. Let's go ahead and find area one now. This is now integral from A to B, top minus bottom, dx. All right, we got 0, 2, 3, minus m over 2. All right, top function is that quadratic minus two thirds x, nope, I went to the wrong place, minus two x squared plus six x, that's the parabola, minus the line, which I think was mx is what I used. Oh, that got messed up too. Oh my goodness. Okay, y equals mx, good, fantastic. That's the bottom, dx. Just don't worry, m is a number. We'll figure out at the end, but it's a constant for now. It's not the value that we're uh, anti-differentiating with respect to. m is that, or x is that variable. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and combine these two together. So we have negative x squared plus 6 minus m x dx. Okay, anti-power rule. This is a number. Don't think about it any more than that. So antiderivative, negative 2 thirds x cubed plus 6 minus m over 2 x squared. Now that was a guess, you check by taking the derivative and you'll see that you end up with uh, six minus m times x to the first power if you take your derivative. All right, we're getting there. So we have negative two thirds, three minus m over two cubed. Wow, this is gonna be a cubic. That's not very fun. So this right here, if we split that up, we got six over two minus m over two. This might be the thing that makes this not horrible uh, algebraically. So that, that coefficient turns into three minus m over two. Now we have another uh, x squared, so we're plugging in three minus m over two squared. I just plugged in the three minus m over two. Now we plug in zero, feel it carefully, got zero and zero. So it's minus zero again. Okay, I could do my favorite F word, which is factor. I see a three minus m over two appearing thrice. So it's cubed times what's left over, negative two thirds plus 
1. So again, I had cubed right there, and then a squared and another one, so I'd cubed all over the place, and I factored everything out of here, so what's left, you gotta have a 1 as a placeholder. Again, you can check by distributing and seeing that you get to that previous line. Okay, so this is area one. And last step, negative two thirds plus one is positive one third. One third times three minus m over two cubed. Okay, we have area one, easy peasy. Kidding, it's actually pretty tough. All right, and we got total area. So rewind back to what I was saying like seven years ago, we have to set uh, we want area 1 to be half of the total area. Alright, so how do we do that? Well, there's two ways to do it. Uh, let's go with 2 times A1 equals A. So 2 times the small area equals the big area. So we got our big area is nine up there. That's our big area. Uh, our small area is a little bit uglier. So it's two times one third, three minus m over two squared. Now we cubed. Oh boy. All right, so we're gonna solve for m. Finally, m we're treating now as a variable. We're finally gonna solve for m. All right, when we do that, uh, I like to think about solving for m as get m by itself with no friends. Good news is there, m appears in one place, so it's not so bad. Let's uh, multiply by three halves. That'll cancel the two and the one third. So nine is three squared times another three divided by two. And you might wonder why did I do that? You'll see in a second. You could definitely write 27 if you want to be fancy with numbers, but I like being fancy with algebra. And how do we get rid of the cube? So now we want to get rid of all M's friends. So there's a divided by two and a three and another three, which one's the most outside is the cube. So we're gonna uncube or take a one third power. So we have three cubed over two, whole thing to the one third power. Here's why I left it as three cubed. I saw this coming. So now you can distribute the power to both of these. So we have three over, now that two, uh, there's not a nice cube root of two. So that's as good as it gets right there. Now we're gonna add a three, a subtract three from both sides. Last up, multiply by negative two. All right, easy, there we go, bada bing. There is our slope. And you might be thinking, oh no, that looks negative. Uh, well, you don't know until you actually uh, estimate these values because there is some positive, some negative. Uh, if I distribute my negative two in, eh, it doesn't matter. This isn't an, that's not important. Hopefully that's positive. Uh, you can always turn this into a, a numeric value. There's no, no way to really do anything with that number uh, other than get an approximation. That's as good as it's gonna get for that one.